So Chuck Todd asked Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez about democratic socialism, and her response here is worthy of exploring. Take a look. The president spent a lot of time on the, using the S word, mm, oh, socialism yeah. and socialist. Um, it was a not too subtle, um, I don't know whether it's a dig or a enhancement. I'll, I'll let you decide. I was flattered. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, you have said you are a democratic socialist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, can you be a democratic socialist and a capitalist? Well, I think it depends on your interpretation. So there are some democratic socialists that would say absolutely not. There are other people that are democratic socialists that would say, I think it's possible. What are you? I think it's possible. I think Do you that say to yourself, I'm, I'm a capitalist, but? I don't say that. Okay. You know, if anything, I would say I'm, I believe in, in a democratic economy, but. Gotcha. But. The butt is there. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so in some ways, whether it's you're coming from, say, Elizabeth Warren's perspective, where she says, you know, she says things like, uh, I'm a capitalist, but we need to have hard rules for the game. What does the um, private sector do better than you know that the private sector, look, government should stay out of X because yeah. the private sector does that better. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things. There's a lot of consumer goods mm -hmm. where the private sector works. And by the way, I think it's important to delineate that just because you're in the private sector doesn't you can be in the private sector and be a democratically socialist business. Worker cooperatives are a perfect example of that. Um, it's not about government takeover. It's about how much do workers have a say in your business? Mm -hmm. Do you have workers on the board? Do workers enjoy a, a, a decent amount of the wealth that they are creating? Or is the majority of these profits going to shareholders while you're paying a worker $15 an hour to live in a New York City apartment? And so that, to me, is the difference. It's not that public, the public sector is democratically socialist and the private sector is not. Um, it's really about a more nuanced understanding of how our economy should work. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff there uh, that's good, but then there's a little point that I really wish she would say, Bernie Sanders would say, and the rest of these people would say. So, um, first of all, I like the fact that she said some stuff that placates a lot of uh, mainstream media. Now, I don't think, let me, let me be clear, I think that she's going to be smeared by the right no matter what. There are a lot of bad faith actors on the right who are just looking to get her so they're going to take things out of context, and they're going to lie, and they're going to mislead, and that is what it is. That's par for the course. We're used to that by now. Uh, Right-wing, you know, commentators and grifters just totally misleading people on stuff. Um, but for people in mainstream media, they don't actively dislike Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but they don't necessarily agree with her, if that makes sense. So when she says, she was asked a very straightforward and a fair question, I think, from Chuck Todd. Hey, what, um, so what, what's better in the private sector? Because AOC has been kind of walking this fine line between, no, 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 I'm not a socialist socialist. I'm, you know, a democratic socialist. And here's what I mean by that. And there's, you know, all these caveats and hedges and all this nuance and whatnot. But she says very clearly, oh, consumer goods. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an answer that basically I give. I, I've spoken about that before. I don't want the government making video games. <laughs> video games or furniture or stuff like that. So there is a place for having a private sector. Obviously, it's supposed to be regulated. Um, and obviously, we need to have rules that make sense. But yeah, the idea of like be totally moving beyond that, I don't necessarily agree with. And maybe that's my own problem, but I can't conceptualize. Like I've read a lot of Noam Chomsky in my life. And he's, uh, it's fair to call him an anarcho-syndicalist or a libertarian socialist. I'm not that, and I'm not that because I simply cannot wrap my mind around the concept of what an economy like that would look like. And anytime somebody tries to explain it, it makes no sense to me. I just don't get it. Uh, when they try to explain it, I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying, man. What do you want me to tell you? And that could be because they're way smarter than me and I'm too dumb to get it. That's perfectly possible. But at the same time, it also might be that they're just, honestly, they've gone too far and they don't have answers for those things. And it's like a leftism of the gaps type argument. We're like, oh, we don't have an answer for this thing or this thing. Well, that's okay, because I'm leftier than now, and that by definition is better. You get a little silly when you start going that far. So that's why I've always said I'm kind of a standard uh, believer in social democracy. I like to describe my ideology as either libertarian left or populist left. Um, but point is, and this is the reason we're doing this segment here, AOC kind of agrees with that. Okay, so 
when she says consumer goods make sense in the private sector, a pure old school democratic socialist would not agree with that. Would not agree with that. Now, at the same time, she does uh, give a, an olive branch to that ideology. And she says the same thing, honestly, that I say, which is, okay, I mean, it's not like I'm not post-capitalist at all. I have little elements of post-capitalism in my philosophy. And one of those things is, I would allow for worker-owned co-ops. It's not like I'd ban the idea of worker-owned co-ops, but I just wouldn't mandate it as if like every company has to be a worker-owned co-op. I think in some instances, some businesses would choose to continue to be traditional capitalist hierarchy with the owner and the boss and then people working underneath it. I don't think that's by definition oppressive. I know some people disagree with that, but I don't. Um, so, But that seems to be what AOC's position is too. Hey, I'm not trying to totally ban capitalism. I think that some things like consumer goods, it makes sense for it to be in the private sector, a regulated private sector. But then I also agree with ideas like worker-owned co-ops, which is technically, I guess, post-capitalist in a way. But it, it, it makes sense if people want to explore that road. And I totally get it. And that's what she says. So I think her... The point is, the answer that she gives here should totally stop all of the smear merchants from claiming that she's a socialist full stop or even a traditional democratic socialist full stop. Because she's not those things. Now that gets to the point of slight criticism, which is... And it, actually, this dates back to Bernie Sanders fucked this up originally. Bernie Sanders was the guy who went out there and said, I'm a democratic socialist. But then when he goes on to explain what he means by democratic socialism, he's not explaining old school democratic socialism. He's explaining social democracy. So the difference there is traditional democratic socialism is social ownership of the means of production. That's not what Bernie Sanders is talking about. That's not what AOC is talking about. So I wish they never let the cat out of the bag in the first place and misdescribe themselves, but they did. So now we live in an era where when somebody des describes themselves as a democratic socialist, that doesn't, by definition, mean they believe in a post-capitalist society where there's social ownership of the means of production. So they kind of let the cat out of the bag by misdescribing themselves because really they're just standard social democrats and they describe themselves as believing in democratic socialism. Um, and I wish they didn't fuck that up, but they did fuck that up. So now I honestly think we live in a world where you can't go back as if they never described themselves as democratic socialist. So now when some people use democratic socialism, colloquially, colloquially, blah, 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 hard word to say, that just means I'm a social democrat. And listen, nobody's more pissed about this than actual democratic socialists <laughs> who are like, you're not me. Stop it. You, you're not post-capitalist. You don't believe in social ownership, all the means of production. So stop saying that. Stop saying you're a democratic socialist. Um, so my criticism is actually more of Bernie than, than uh, AOC. Because Bernie always says he's a democratic socialist, then describes social democracy. AOC now does the same thing as Bernie. I'm a democratic socialist, but here's what that means to me. And in his, her description, it is, I believe in social democracy. So I just wish that Bernie had popularized the term social democracy, and AOC had accurately described herself as a social democrat, and Bernie had accu accurately described himself as a social democrat. Because then, the right-wing smears will never, never stop. They'll always call you a socialist full stop, okay? But I honestly don't think mainstream media would have called them socialists full stop if they said, no, I believe in social democracy, and here's what that means. So I actually think they would have saved themselves a lot of trouble. Again, not from the right, because they're going to smear no matter what, but from corporate media and from mainstream media. They would not engage in those bad faith total smears. If she had described herself as a social democrat and Bernie described himself as a social democrat... I don't think you would even get these kinds of questions from the Chuck Todds who say, um, like, what does that mean kind of thing? Are, are you post-capitalist? Because people would know that, no, you're not. So I think Bernie and AOC kind of confused the public conversation on democratic socialism and social democracy. And I don't think that was necessarily a good thing. But now that we're in that space, we have to deal with it. And that becomes a little bit of a headache <laughs> because I've seen it myself. You know, they've they've all been smeared as fully post-capitalist, you know, and um, that's just not true. So to have to, like, go back to square one and explain that to everybody, no, here's what they mean by democratic uh, socialist. They don't mean traditional. They mean social democrat and blah, 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 blah. And I just think it would have been an easier fight if they said we're social democrats, because honestly, I think that's easier to defend. And some people in my audience disagree with me. That's fine. But listen, you can't deny that I have the empirical reality on my side. I just do. 
That's why I, I don't need. See, that's the thing about believing in social democracy. You don't need some theory. Like, you ever talk to libertarians? Well, in theory, the thing that would work perfectly is if we did X, Y, and Z. Oh, really? Where's it been implemented and worked? <laughs> Talking to communists. Keep it real. Well, see, in theory, that wasn't true communism because true communism is when you do blah, 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 blah. I don't need to rationalize anything. <laughs> I don't need to rationalize anything. You know what I do? Norway. Denmark. Iceland. Sweden. There. Right there. See them? They're doing it. See it? Look at all the studies, all the numbers. You know, the, the empirical reality is they kick our ass on health of the middle class, self-described... Um, happiness, better healthcare systems, more uh, paid time off, the list goes on and on. So I don't need any rationalization, any no true Scotsman thing. I, it's just, no, 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 this, see, it's working. See, it? it's right there. It's right there. Now, is that the end all be all? Is it impossible to improve on that? Uh, no, I think you can actually improve on those kinds of systems. But the framework is correct. Mixed market economy, socialism, capitalism, Heavy regulation of the private sector, um, important rules regarding, you know, paid time off, um, parental leave, sick leave, so on and so forth. The basic framework is correct, and it's a matter of improving from within that framework. The point is, I don't need to rationalize, I don't need to justify, I don't need to apologize or explain away failures of X, Y, or Z, because it's just working, what I like. <laughs> so, and I think that that argument would have been a lot more powerful had Bernie and AOC and others. It's not just them. It's others who describe themselves as democratic socialists. TYT has done, oh, I'm democratic socialist. No, you're not. You're social democrats, and you should have known the difference, you know? So whatever is what it is. We got to deal with it now. But um, outside of that, I love, I love the answer. I think it's very nuanced. I think it's very intelligent. And I think it's where most of the people in this new insurgent left movement, where they live.